Hey everyone, so let's continue the advanced illustration series. Or illustration 3 ki taraf uh, Let's move towards illustration 3. Find sum of real roots of the equation x equal to under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus x. A very interesting problem. Let's see, kaise approach hiya jai. So, the first approach uh, that uh, comes in mind is let's take the square on both the sides to remove the square root. So, yep, let's take it and we have x square equal to 2022 plus square root of 2022 plus x. Now what? So, now uh, we can think like Let's bring this here. And take the whole squares once again. Okay. So now we will have an equation like x to the power 4 minus x here, alright, and something, something which we do not consider or care about since we have to find sum. But if I directly use a formula of sum of the roots, this will give me sum of all roots. Not sum of real roots. I don't want sum of all roots. I want sum of real roots. So, proceeding like this is very bad. Even if you made the whole equation, let us say, then it is again an hectic task because you need to find the square of 2022. And that is a lot of calculations to make. So, this approach does not work. It would work if, it, if he would have asked for only sum of all the roots. Right now, he is asking only for some of real roots. Okay, let's see what we can do further more. So, now I will play an interesting trick here. I have been given that x equal to under root of x equal to square root of 2022 plus square root of x plus square root of 2022 plus x. Now here comes a very interesting approach to this question. What I will do is, now here I have an x here, right? And from this equation only, we have that x equal to under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus x. So, I will substitute it and I will have x is equal to under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus Plus under root of 2022 plus under root 2022 plus x, right? What I did is I substituted x and I can again substitute x in the same fashion. So I will have x is equal to under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus under root 2022 plus x. 
right now i can keep on uh, putting x like this so what i eventually get is that x is nothing but x is nothing but under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 plus under root of 2022 and this will continue till infinity okay why this is uh, so because we have the uh, we have this pattern going on here so ultimately at each step i will substitute x or i will batch substitute x this process is known as batch substitution this is known as batch substitution this is a very uh, quite popular technique we use it in recursion relations a lot and you can say it is a light recurrence relation only so we have by batch substitution we get that x is nothing but this whole thing root of 2022 plus root of 2022 up to infinity so now we can just solve it like we solve these problems so we can take a square on the both sides so now our x square is nothing but 2022 plus this infinite right so this becomes x square equal to 2022 plus x so now i have the equation x square minus x minus 2022 equal to 0 Now once again, see, we get the sum of roots as one, but that is not the question. We have to find sum of the real roots. So let us find both the roots. Let's see if both the roots are real or not. We cannot be sure that both the roots are real. So x will be equal to. Mm, so. this is the equation we get and from here we have the thing since we have to find the sum of real roots that uh, actually both roots will be real but uh, one will be neglected okay why that will be neglected the reason is that x is has to be positive x has to be positive Why? Because x is equal to this thing. The roots will be always real, but the deal is that you will have to neglect the negative. So indeed, let's remove this real from the question because it will be the roots will be always real. Anyhow, so even it, uh, if we put the real here, it is not going to affect much. Actually, it is just going to be again a tricky word. Because you will come here and you will think like uh, this equation has both roots real, so one is the answer. But again, this is a red row. You miss this part and you mark your answer as one. The part is that x must be greater than zero. So we have to take the positive root. So x will be given by one. Plus minus one plus eight zero eight eight by two. So the answer to the question is one plus under root eight zero eight nine upon two. This is the final answer. So this was a. Uh, good problem, conceptual one. Again, a new technique involved batch substitution. So, I hope you have understood this problem.
we'll move now to the next one now we are starting the problems which are from number theory and quadratic equation maths okay these are going to be uh, these topics are from number theory also these questions are from number theory also but the approach that will be used will be all from quadratic equation so i have included them here find all integers x comma y such that this is equal to 8 this this so all three are independent questions they are three separate parts now what we are solving right now are known as diophantine equations okay these are known as diophantine equations and i am planning to make a pro uh, proper separate video on the theory of diophantine equations because i believe they need a proper address a proper theory on how to solve every type of diophantine equation this is a quadratic one there could be higher powers also right so let us start this one let's start solving it so if i see i am being given an equation something like for the first part x square plus 4y square minus 2xy minus 2x minus 4y equal to 8 right so we have to find all the integers which satisfy this so what we will do is we will bring it here all right now this is a multi variable quadratic function okay if i see the rh lhs then my lhs is a multi variable lhs is a multi variable function and how we deal with multi variable function is we will say that one we will consider this equation in any one variable since the coefficient of x is less than the coefficient of y we consider this an equation in x so we consider we consider this consider this as an equation in x we will for the time being treat y as a constant so what we will do is uh, we arrange it in the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 all right we will try to arrange it in this form so we get x square x square uh minus 2x y plus 1 plus 4 times y square minus y minus 2 equal to 0 now if this equation has integer solution that we are given that x belongs to integer since x belongs to integer since x belongs to integer we have that the discriminant should be a perfect square the discriminant for this equation should be a perfect square 
and the discriminant is equal to b square minus 4ac so it becomes 4 times y plus 1 whole square minus 16 times y square minus y minus 2 and this thing should be a perfect square let us say m square so now let us simplify this so we have 4 times y square plus 2y plus 1 minus 16 times y square minus y minus 2 as a perfect square so expanding it more we have minus 12y square plus 24y plus 36 should be a perfect square Okay, so we can take a 4 common and we will have again minus 3y square plus 6y plus 9 as a perfect square. Or uh, let us better, yeah, let's take a 4 common. Okay, I will tell you why. This is a perfect square. Now, 4 is in itself a perfect square. So this implies that minus 3y square plus 6y plus 9 is a perfect square. That's why I did not take out the 3 term. I already know that 4 is a perfect square and if I am multiplying it with any integer and getting a perfect square, it means that integer in itself is a perfect square. So I have minus 3y square plus 6y plus 9 to be another perfect square say n square. Now, if this thing is a perfect square, this means uh, that this quantity minus 3y square plus 6y plus 9 should be greater than or equal to 0, right? This thing should be greater than or equal to 0. Since it's a perfect square, it has to be always positive or zero. So this means if I multiply with a minus one on both sides, I have the reversed inequality 3y square minus 6y minus 9. That should be less than or equal to zero. So now what I can do is I need to find the range in which y will lie. Okay. So my y lies in. So I have two values of y and y will lie between the roots. That is for sure. We will have two roots for y and all the values of y will be in that between the roots only since it is less than or equal to 0. Let us say y1 and y2 are the roots. So the graph will be something like this. So let us find all the possible uh, integer values for which this is less than or equal to 0. So the root send me y equal to 6 plus minus under root 36 plus 4ac. So 4ac is like 12 into 9, 1, 0, 8 by 6. Let's take the 6 common from the square root also. So this is like 6 plus minus. Uh, if I take, I can take the 36 only common. So this is like, uh, okay, this is in itself an integer only. Right, right, right. So this is x plus minus root 144 by 6. So one root is uh, minus 1 and the other root is uh, 6 plus 12 that is 18 uh, and 18 by 6 is 3. So all the roots 
all the possible integer will belong in this range so y belongs to minus 1 comma 3 and y belongs to integer now since y is an integer that is where we can say that y is either minus 1 0 1 2 3 now we will need to put y in the original equation all these values and check for h if it results what positive integer it results or not so the equation was let's write it once again it looks something like h square minus 2 x y plus 1 plus 4 times y square minus y minus 2 equal to 0 right equal to 0 yeah this was the equation we got yep now let us start putting first with y equal to minus 1 so as soon as i put y is equal to minus 1 this thing will vanish and here i will have plus 4 times 0 right everything is 0 this both will vanish when y equal to minus 1 so h square equal to 0 so h equal to 0 so we have one integer pair as 0 and minus 1 let us see if it in actually satisfies so 4 plus 4 8 yeah 0 minus 1 actually satisfies so we have one solution 0 comma minus 1 now we will put y equal to 0 so as soon as i will put y equal to 0 my equation will look like h square minus 2x plus not plus minus 8 equal to 0 so now here I will have this equation like x minus 4 into x plus 2 equal to 0. So from here I will have two roots 4 and minus 2. So in all there will be two pairs right 4 0 and minus 2 comma 0. So this was for y equal to minus 1 and this we are getting for y is equal to 0. Now similarly we will put y equal to 1. So in that case the equation will become x square minus 2x times 2 plus 4 times y square minus y minus 2 that is 1 minus 1 minus 2 that is equal to 0. So this becomes x square minus 4x minus 8 equal to 0. This is only it what becomes. yeah 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 so from here we will not get any integer pair because discriminant is 16 and 32 16 plus 32 is not a perfect square so we reject this thing so y equal to 1 is not a good choice now we put y is equal to 2 and for that we will get h square minus 6x plus uh, 4 times y square minus y minus 2. So y square is 4 minus 2 and minus 2 equal to 0. So this all cancels and we have x times x minus 6 equal to 0. So we have x equal to 0 and x equal to 6. So again we get two integer pairs 0 and 2 and 6 and 2. Right. And now finally we put y is equal to 3. 
since y had only the possible value 0 1 minus 1 0 1 2 3 so now we put y is equal to 3 and now the equation becomes h square minus h square minus uh, 2 x into 4 plus 4 times y square minus y minus 1 minus 2 this is equal to 0 so this becomes h square minus 8 x plus 16 right yeah equal to 0 so from here we have nothing but x minus 4 whole square equal to 0 so we have x equal to 4 and since x is equal to 4 so the only solution here is 4 comma so what are the integer pairs we have? What are the integer pairs? Let's write them all down. All the integral solutions. From the let's start from the bottom only. We have 4 comma 3, first pair. Then we have 0 comma 2 and 6 comma 2. 0, 2, 6, 2. So this was for y equal to 3. This is for y is equal to 2. For y is equal to 1, there was no solution. For y equal to 0, we have only one solution 0, minus 1. Sorry, y equal to 0, right? So, no, no, no. This was y equal to minus 1. Did we put y equal to 0? I guess we forgot that one. y equal to 2, y equal to 1. This is y equal to minus 1. Now, if we forgot uh, for uh, 0, we will take that one also. So, we have 0, comma minus 1 here. Let's put y equal to 0 also. Uh, the equation will be like x square minus 2x plus 4 equal to 0. Right? And this will also have no solution. So, eventually not a big deal, right? So, these are all the pairs which are possible having integer solution. Again, this was a easy problem if you know how to solve it. But that's the thing. But this technique is not known to everyone. Uh, that's why it becomes difficult because it has too much to think. But if you know the approach, then it will be very easy for you. So, this was the approach. Let me discuss it with you once again. We considered this as a quadratic in x since coefficient of x was less than coefficient of y. Making calculations obviously easy. So we convert it in this form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Then I do nothing but make discriminant the perfect square. Now the tricky part here was that this coefficient was negative. And that's why, and that actually makes it easy. If this would have been uh, positive, then we would have to resort to a longer method, which we will discuss in the third part of this question only. So now, since it, uh, so I factored out the fourth common from here, and since four is a perfect square, so this thing should also be a perfect square. And if this is a perfect square, then it should be positive. Then I solve the inequality. I know that y will belong to between the roots only if it has to satisfy this inequality. So y belongs to minus 1, comma 3, both inclusive. 
and then just start putting the values from minus 1 to 3 and keep obtaining x. So this was a lengthy problem and these kind of problems again become very important because they are a popular variety in Olympiads. Now part 2, I leave it as an exercise for you viewers. Because it is pretty similar to the part 1, nothing different. I will discuss with you now part 3 because it has something more interesting. The interesting part is, let's see, the part 3. Let's see what it says. Part 3 is x square plus x plus 41. This is a perfect square. Y square. So it in English it translates to find all x from a y uh, find all integer x such that x square plus x plus 41 is a perfect square. Now to solve this equation, we will not take that delta is a perfect square. No. That will make it a very lengthy too much putting infinitely long looking problem. Instead of that, what we will do is we will complete square. Complete the square. Now you have to have to remember these uh, variety and the method we are using. Complete the square. So now what I will do is I will have so let's start completing the square. We already know how to do that. Multiply by 2 and divide by 2. So now add a 1 by 4, subtract a 1 by 4. Right? This is how we complete the squares. This becomes x plus 1 by 2 ka whole square. plus 41 minus 1 by 4 that is 1 for the 4, 4 for the 16 so 164 and 1 on 163 by 4 this should be equal to y square so now we have 2x plus 1 whole square plus 163 and this is equal to 4y square so now what we will do is, we will write it as 163 equal to 4y square minus 2x plus 1 whole square. So now 163 becomes using a square minus b square, 2y plus 2x plus 1 into 2y minus 2x minus 1. And since x, y belongs to integer, these both have the factors of 1, 2, 3, uh, 163. These both are nothing but factors of 163. So now we start off with and we can see uh, that 163 can be written as uh, is 163 divisible by any other number? Is 163 a prime? Uh, I believe so it's a prime because it is not divisible by not by 13 Mm. not by 17 also I guess not by 17 also because 17 times is uh, 153 not by 21 not by 23 yeah it's a prime so 163 is prime so it can be only written as 1 into 163 so now we have that 2x plus 2y 
plus 1 is 163 and 2y minus 2x minus 1 is 1. So we add both of them and we have 4y uh, equal to 164 and so we have y is equal to 41 and x equal to 41 2 is 82 right 41 2 is 82 and 82 minus 2 is 80 so we get x equal to 40 this is one possible solution and the other one would be that it would be also written as minus 1 into minus 163. So the other way around could be 2x plus 2y plus 1 equal to minus 163 and 2y minus 2x minus 1 that is equal to minus 1. So we will have y is equal to minus 41 and uh, x equal to minus 40 only I guess yeah. Minus 82 and okay. X value will change. X value will definitely change. X will be also minus 41 only. Because eventually this minus 1 and minus 1 will cancel out. So we have 40, 41 as a solution. And we have minus 41 comma minus 41 but yeah no but everything is all right so these are the two possible values of x which will satisfy the equation uh, let's ensure ourselves that 163 is a prime that can be done easily actually you find root of 163 right and the nearest integer to that is actually 13. Since root 163 is more near to 169. And 13 is not going to be divisible by any prime less than it. Right? 13 is not divisible by any prime less than it. So this means 13 is a prime number. I mean 13 is a prime number, uh, so we have 163 is a prime number. So this, this was it, this was this question. Part 2, I have left it for you guys because it is similar to part 1, you should be able to solve it. And I hope this part is now clear. I have done nothing but just completed the square and did some manipulations. Here I have taken the LCM and sent it that side. So you will need to remember what to do in which situation. I have done both type of questions. So even if you have, uh, when you have to, so what is the key taking? Let me take you. That whenever you have an expression of the type ax square plus bx plus c and you have to make it a perfect square, you have to make it a perfect square, then there will arise two cases, a greater than 0 and a less than 0. If a is greater than 0, then we always complete the square. complete the square and then use a square minus b square and if a is less than 0 then we use that ax square plus bx plus c should be greater than or equal to c. So x will basically belong to the between the roots of the equation. So this is how we deal with this variety. I hope these two problems are clear. 
we will meet again in the next video if you have any doubts ask it out in the comments like the video share the video and please subscribe to my channel for more such interesting content for more such helpful content for jay advanced thank you